exercise 22. In this exercise, we take a look at the functionality with Pro, Pro Engineer Creo 2.0 and its ability to import IGES models, which IGES stands for the Initial Graphics Exchange Specification. It's one of the very first of the uh, neutral translators that were available and essentially allows CAD systems to interact with one another. Uh, so you could save as an IGES file, and most other CAD systems can open it up. Anyhow, they don't always come in very clean, and sometimes surfaces are missing. And in this goal, we want to go ahead and be able to verify, and I like to use the mass properties to verify if there's actually a watertight solid there, because it gives you a, a mass. And in this case, we have 2.42 pounds. But it's not always come, they don't always come in that easily. Let's see what happens here. Let's um, I'm gonna close this. I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to select, let's see, to my documents. And I'm going to find the iGest format. So I click down here. Notice there's also Step, there's uh, the German Automotive, stand, Automotive Standard, BDA, or whatever it stands for, but go to iGES, and you'll find the E22 iGES file, open it up, use a template, make sure it's set to part, you can give it a name if you like, I'm just going to hit OK. Okay, the part translates in, and if you want, we're tr going to try and use this for molding or, or modify, cutting holes into it. It's not very easy when it's a collection of surfaces, it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, and essentially you can't make a cavity for it for a mold and here's what I just want to do I'm just gonna to go to the analysis and mass properties and verify it sure enough the mass is zero pounds it's it's not watertight there's holes or gaps in it so we have the ability to go into the import feature by right-clicking and edit the definition in here there's a little toolkit a little rescue kit you can see here that allows you to fix it. There's also import as a solve because by default it might have just imported as a collection of surfaces that were untrimmed. So you could try importing the solid, hit the green check mark, check the uh, see if it's a solid afterwards. But I'll tell you right now, in this case it doesn't work. But we'll go ahead and turn import solid and we'll go ahead and click on the little toolkit there. You will notice there's a repair tool. You can try and attempt to repair it just on the fly. Um, usually you can find gaps and slivers with this tool if there's any little gaps and slivers. And the repair tool is pretty good at stitching those together if things are already merged. Um, in this case we have some very large holes. And if you rotate the part around, sometimes you can easily see them one way or not so easily either. But in this case you can see like I'm looking through the part here at the top. So there's an issue there. There's actually a whole gap. And there's a gap over here as well as over here. What I did is I just changed the back surfaces to different colors so I could identify front and back. And if anything, any colors show through, that'll awaken me to a problem. So what we're going to do inside here, there's a nice boundary blend tool. And actually it's in, just in the modeler itself. You don't necessarily have to go in here for this. But I'm going to go ahead and select the boundary blend tool. Click on curves and zoom up to this. Now, here you can see, uh, you can just basically select the edges of the gap. So I'm going to hold control and select the first two that are apart from each other. Here, these little dots, you right click on them, you could go with tangency to ensure that it's going to be as smooth as possible, as if the fillet was being put in there. Notice it's not perfect yet because we have to go to second direction and select the other edges. If the, one of the edges extends a little bit further, it's usually not an issue. You can go ahead and leave it. If it does become an issue, there's actually a tool that allows you to split up those edges. It's inside this uh, uh, repair tool kit that we're playing with right now. Anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. You see it leaves a little blue patch, a pale blue patch. We'll go to the other one over here. Do the same. Boundary blend. Go to curves. Select the edges that are detached from each other first. You can do this. You could do this later too. There's actually a tangent tool once it stitches it, and uh, you could turn that on and it'll automatically transform this tangent. I don't know if I trust it 100%. Um, I haven't really verified how well it works, but um, it does seem to work when I tried it. And I'll leave those two so we can verify those later. I could try that tool I was just mentioning. There's another patch there, and then the one on the inside here. 
Let's go back to boundary blend, select the edge, hold control, select this edge. I go to curves, select the second direction, and do the same. The larger ones really are important to make sure that they're tangents, so right click on there. Now notice you have normal and curvature. Curvature is for like if you're working on an automotive body panel or aircraft panel that uses C2 curvature continuity. Uh, and here it's not as uh, critical, these are just standard fillets. But still, um, I want to make sure we turn on tangency as many as we can. And hit apply. Alright, now that those are all patched, you can scan the part, look, look at it. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And unfortunately, oh, when I want to go back in there, you'll see that the repair tool is no longer valid. You can't use it. And what I found is whenever you start adding additional surfaces or make modifications to the part, it kicks you out of the repair tool. This isn't a, a bizarre phenomena. This occurs in almost all CAD packages that are parametric. So it's not uh, just in Creo here. Anyway, my suggestion, what I found works pretty well, is you just exit out of here, apply. You could see if it did anything by going to Mass Properties again. You can see it's still just a collection of surfaces. It's not watertight. All you do is just go to File and do a Save As. Save a copy. I drop it on my desktop and I'm going to give this a new name. I'm going to call it the E22E. E. Hit OK. Oh, and I forgot. I meant to uh, do a save as, save as copy. I meant to save it as an IGES file. You could re-save it as an IGES file or step. That's the one I was telling you about. And then just hit OK. Oh, actually we'll call it E22E. E. Hit OK. Now there are some options. Wireframe edges, surfaces, solids, shell, datum curves, points. Uh, I would suggest going with surfaces. Then when you bring it in, you could try and use the knit tool. If you use the solids tool, sometimes you risk it trying to export as a B-Rep solid. And since it wasn't watertight to begin with, it might have some issues. So just go ahead and hit OK. All right, at this point now, we could go ahead and re-import it. Open. Find the iGES file option and E22E. Open it up. You could just leave everything the same, hit OK, and the surfaces are still blue. Whenever they're blue patched still, that's usually not a good sign. It didn't, didn't automatically stitch it together. Now we could go to the import feature and edit the definition. And, and actually, before I do that, let me just prove to you. I'll go to analysis, mass properties, mass is zero, so it's not solid yet. But here we're going to go ahead and right click, edit definition. Now we could convert, try and convert it to a solid and hit apply. Unfortunately, they're still blue. That's not going to do the job. So right click, edit definition. We need to go to the toolkit, the little life preserver like thing. And you'll notice now, repair is returned. That's because we re-imported it, stripped it of its parametrics. And we could go ahead and click on repair. And this repair does a pretty good job of stitching those up. Don't panic, you're not going to see it turn blue right away. It's not until you hit OK. But here you can see all the surface normals. It allows you to uh, interrogate each one in the event that one's flipped inside out. Um, in this case, you can turn on repair tangency if there was anything missed. I think I purposely missed one over there. So we'll go through the surfaces to ensure that everything is tangent, um, especially the radiuses. And I'm going to go ahead and Hit the green check mark to apply and hit OK. And hit the green check, uh, change it to solid, uh, import solid again. Green check. And if you're lucky, um, you should have turned like to a darker gray. And that should indicate that it's a solid, but we could verify it. Let's go to mass properties. Hit the eyeglasses. And we have mass. 2.42 pounds, just like we had hoped. And that concludes this exercise.